Doug Yule and Steve Sestick stayed behind in London to go into the studio to record some songs that would be used as a solo album or a Velvet Underground's fifth album. The band was still technically under contract with Atlantic Records, but Sesnick was working on a deal with Polydor to have some kind of release for the European and Japanese markets. With only Yule to sing, play, and produce the album, Sesnick had total control of what kind of album would be coming out of these recordings. He wanted a very commercial and radio-friendly album that was even more popular than Loaded. Doug Yule went to the studio and played on all of the instruments on over a dozen tracks that were going to be used on a future album. The drumming and percussion duties were handled by Deep Purple's drummer Ian Pace, who was working as a studio musician. According to Doug Yule, he would go up to Pace's drum kit and demonstrate to him what kind of backbeat he wanted on each song. Doug Yule said in an interview about recording the tracks on the album, I would never even conceive if I was in a group now of doing an album without sitting down with the whole group and saying, now we're going to do an album. What do you think about that? Anyway, it happened, and I was very much caught up in my own hubris at the time. I, so full of, okay, here I am, I'm in England, I'm recording, I'm working with Ian Pace of Deep Purple. It was like the blind leading the blind. Me leading myself. That's what came out of it? I don't even have a copy of it. But it's kind of a nice memory for me, kind of embarrassment at the same time. I wish I had my eyes wider open, but it was nice to get my name and my songs out there. A lot of that stuff is about Lou anyway, so is it, it's about Maureen. He also stated that it was hard to record the songs with no one to play off of because all he had was some basic drumming from Ian Pace, who was just a hired gun. All the basic tracks were laid down with drums and me. Ian Pace of Deep Purple played the drums. So he and I would lay down a track. How much airplay can you have when it's all it is is just one guitar or piano? You can hear that. It's kind of dead. I think you get more when you have three or four people playing together. They feed off each other. They work together. And something comes out of it. It's bigger. Some of the lyrics and ideas for the songs, according to Yule, were suggested to him by Steve Sesnick, and he would add extra verses and music to them. The two oldest songs that were recorded were Friends and She'll Make You Cry, which originated back in 1970, and Sterling Morrison, Walter Powers, and Maureen Tucker recorded a demo of these songs, which were going to be used for a fifth album for Atlantic Records. Some of the other songs that were recorded, the band played on or rehearsed during their European tour were Caroline, Dopey Joe, Nino Man, and Little Jack. The tracks Crash and Send No Letter sounded like the songs that C. Sesnick gave ideas to Doug Ewell for. Jack and Jane plays as a sequel of sorts to Sweet Jane, and Wordless sounds similar to Friends and She'll Make You Cry. The longest track on the album was Louise, which clocks in at nearly six minutes long. A couple of female vocalists were used to sing chorus on several songs, and they were multi-tracked according to Ewell to make it sound like there were several of them in the studio. He did the same thing for the saxophone, multi-tracked the sax played by Malcolm Duncan so he could sound like a horn section instead of just one player. After the recordings were finished, Buell later recalled, I remember sitting on a plane writing extensive notes on the mixing of the album. I sent it to Steve and none of my suggestions were taken. I'm sure he didn't even read it. He mixed it for the best possible commercial success. It's really embarrassing. I gave what I had at the time. There are parts of it I hate, parts of it I don't. But if I had to do it all over again, it would be a completely different album with different people and have nothing to do with Sesnick. Only 11 of the songs that were recorded were selected to appear on the upcoming album. The 12th song, which was recently heard on a rare test pressing of the album that was pressed by Presswell Records, manufacturing company. I guess this rare disc, which was found in a Los Angeles used record shop was going to be for a potential U.S. release that never was. After the tracks were recorded, Yule went home to New England and the current lineup was finished. Maureen Tucker went back to Georgia, Walter Powers and Willie Alexander went back to Boston, and the band was finished. The issue at hand is that the music Doug Yule recorded in London with Steve Sesnick meant to be for a solo album or for a possible fifth Velvet Underground album. 
According to friend of the band and future member Robin Norris, the recordings were originally meant for a Doug Yule solo album due to the band still being under contract with Atlantic Records. A few months later, however, Sesnick spoke to Norris about assembling a band under the name Velvet Underground because Polydor Records wanted to release those Doug Yule recordings as a fifth studio album. Being the ever sleazy, stereotypical rock and roll manager, Sesnick told Norris that Maureen Tucker and Sterling Morrison would be in the new lineup and that he had a tour for them in Europe to promote the album's release. So, were the London recordings always meant for a solo album? Or was Steve Sesnick hustling everyone by keeping these tracks on the side so if Atlantic Records didn't want them, he could sell them to Polydor or another record label? Well, Atlantic Records didn't want them because they would find a way to get out of the second album contract by releasing the live album live at Max's Kansas City on May 30th, 1972. The release was a low-fidelity recording of the Velvet Underground performing at the club that was taped off a portable cassette player. Atlantic felt that it would be a cheaper alternative than to pay for studio time due to the poor sales of Loaded. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Cuppy's Music Curios. My name is Cuppy, and I hope to see you soon. Cheerio!